Welcome back. So the queues are uh, quite positive. Let's look at the stocks that could be in focus today. That's the uh, implied open uh, with the uh, gift nifty. Most of the Asian markets are showing lots of green, barring uh, mainland China as well as Hong Kong. So let's talk stocks. As promised, we have our team standing by with uh, the, the list this morning. Uh, guys, uh, okay, we've got everybody on the same window now. Manglam, you go first. Zomato in focus yet again. Tell us more about this potential block. Well, you know, so if you look at Zomato, yesterday there were good pieces of news coming in. The stock was doing extremely well, but it ended in the red after hitting a record high. So nearly 7% of highs. Uh, that's about one month. But just yesterday's chart should tell you that, you know, the stock was seeing or sensing some sort of supply coming in, in uh, uh, you know, after the big move that we saw already. And now we have news on that as well. These are sources telling Nimesh that uh, Anfin will sell 2% stake in the company for nearly 500 and $56 million. Remember, uh, there is a fair amount of demand for that, which is why the offer size has been increased from 1.5% equity earlier as of last evening to about 2% now itself. The floor price is at 251.6, which is a 4% discount to yesterday's close. And which is why I'm going with a red largely because the deal would be done at that. There would be an adjustment for it. Thereafter, the stock would perhaps see a recovery given the sort of momentum that it's seen already. The only thing that we'll have to watch out for now is that are they looking at a clean out at some point in time? Because right now they are selling 2%. They hold about 4.24% stake as well. So at some point, you know, they would like to sell the other 2.24% as well. It was a bit of a supply overhang, but nothing fundamentally wrong. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we had Ramdeo Agarwal yesterday yes, with us. Yes, he said they've started trimming yeah. stake no, as well. At least trimmed significantly. Yes. Uh, but uh, he said to be sure they bought under 100 rupees. Yeah. And uh, they wanted to sort of realign the portfolio a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, it just shows you that uh, early investors, this is a buoyant market. I mean, if you don't sell now, if you want to sell, if you don't sell now, uh, you know, when do you do it? So, and funds, of course, can sell for a variety of reasons. It's not... Uh, or ne or always necessarily, you know, call that, well, the business has turned south or whatever. It's not th the case. And I think Mr. Agarwal, of course, made that case very pointedly. Indusind Bank is the next one we were focusing on. Abhishek has got details here. Abhishek, good morning. Good morning, Prashant. So, Indusind Bank has given a press release wherein they mentioned that the bank has received approval from RBI to set up a wholly owned uh, asset management uh, business of a mutual fund. So, this is to be done via equity infusion or uh, infusion of equity capital into that. That, uh, AMC business. Uh, there are additional conditions which are mentioned in the letter. Remember that sometime back uh, the promoter group, that is Hinduja group, had picked up a 60% stake in Invesco. So Nomura has written a note on Indusin Bank. They have a neutral rating with a target price of 1,580 per share. They say that this is a positive development for the bank uh, that currently does not have any direct para banking subsidiary businesses. Back to you. Right, okay. Uh, all right, Abhishek, thanks very much. So let's see, or perhaps uh, one more mutual fund house coming soon to the street. Uh, let's uh, quickly move on and talk about Bajaj Auto. Sudarshan's watching out for uh, this one. What's the news here, Sudarshan? Morning, Survi. So for Bajaj Auto, I'm going with red just because company will see one-time impact in its net profit in the Q2 period. So the news is company will provide for rupees 211 crore in Q2 as indexation benefit is withdrawn on debt mutual fund long-term capital gains. So what will be the impact on PNL? Company says provision for this one-time impact will be made in the net profit and impact of one-time change relates to other income and not the operating performance. Also, only a provision is made being made in the books of accounts at this point actual tax payment will be made at the time of redemption of these, these mutual funds. So what are the reasons of these additional provisions that company is going to make in Q2? Company invests surplus funds into several asset classes, including debt mutual funds. It used to make provisions for deferred tax on fair value gains on these investments. Remember, in budget, finance minister announced withdrawal of indexation benefit on LTCG on debt mutual funds purchased before April 1, 2023, and also announced change in the tax rate from 20 percent, sorry, to 12.5 percent without indexation, from 20 percent with indexation, and this is the reason that these auto companies are going to make additional provisions in Q2. All right, Sudarshan, thanks a lot for that. Mild red is what you see on Bajaj Auto as well. The stock ended about a percent point two lower in yesterday's session already. It was similar to what Maruti had said in yesterday's session as well. Stock ended about half a percent lower too. But uh, let's go across to Rima now. Rima has got uh, news from the tech space. Rima, HCL Tech and Nucleus Software. 
Uh, yes, let me start with HCL Tech, where the CFO Pratik Agarwal will be stepping down to pursue opportunities outside of the company. Uh, the company has appointed Shiv Valia as the CFO, effective 6th of September. Shiv Valia has been, um, you know, and with the company for over three decades now. He started his professional career, so an insider, and he will take on the role of the CFO's position in, at HCL Tech. Nucleus Software is the other mid-cap IT company. I'll be watching board meet on the 22nd of this month, where they will consider a buyback of shares. The cash in the company's books as of 30th June was 920 crores. Back to you. <clears throat> All right, uh, thanks very much, uh, Rima, for that. Well, Zagal Prepaid uh, is uh, the other one we want to talk about here. Also, by the way, there was a, a block. A prudent corporate advisory was down sharply yesterday, uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, that one we want to cover as well. Vivek has got both those. Vivek, morning. Well, good morning. You know, both of these stocks actually saw large trades in yesterday's trading session. Let's go with Zagel first. Zagel, again, what's actually happened here? One strategic investor, Zuzu Corporate uh, Software Services, sold close to 4% stake at 361 rupees a share. Now, remember, they held close to 12.83% stake, so now there remains an overhang of further trimming of stake. Now, when you're talking about prudent corporate advisory, again, close to 2.5% of total, 3.5% uh, of total equity actually exchanged hands yesterday. Uh, you know, two of the promoters, which is Sanjay Shah, sold close to 1% percent of the total 43.3 percent stake that he held in the company and another promoter Ramesh Ramesh Chandra Shah sold close to its entire 1.48 percent stake amongst the buyers are the ones that have been disclosed to society general they purchased close to 0.7 percent stake going with the red on the back of the you know strategic investor and the promoter selling stake in both these companies all right uh, got that thanks Vivek very much for that back to uh, Abhishek Abhishek uh, you are looking at poly medicure what's the development here uh, well, sources tell that uh, you know, Poly Medicure has launched a QIP. The QIP size is about 1,000 crore and the indicative price that they have set is at 1,850 per share to 1,880 per share. So the discount is about 11.5% to yesterday's closing price and to semi flow price it's almost at the similar level. Equity dilution would be about 5.5% to pre uh, you know, QIP uh, equity base that they have. The use of proceeds states that funding capital uh, expenditure to be incurred a company for uh, setting up manufacturing facilities uh, pursuing inorganic opportunities and general corporate purpose so there is a 90 days lock-in uh, for the promoter and uh, promoter group uh, book running lead managers are IFL securities as well as SBI cap back to you all right polymedicure was a big mover in yesterday's trading session a QIP today Vamakshi joins in now with all the other stocks that are in the news Vamakshi well, good morning, Mangalam. Let me first start off with high-tech pipes going with the green for this counter and that is because the company is looking to raise funds up to nearly 600 crores. They are considering various modes of funding which includes QIP, FPO, rights issue, among some other combinations. Uh, the next stock on my radar is Sequence Scientific going with the green for this one as well after the company has received pre-qualification approval from the World Health Organization for Albendazole API. Uh, this approval is in partnership with Mepro Pharmaceuticals who has successfully developed and commercialized the chewable formulation from its WHO PQ approved plant using sequence API. By the way, alpendazole is a vital medication that is used to treat a range of parasitic infections and Mepro's chewable formulation is the first global approval of its kind by the WHO PQ. So on the back of this development, going with the green for sequence scientific. All right, got that. Um, actually, thanks very much. Let's quickly recap our list of top stocks to watch this morning. The ones that have positive news flow around them are Indescent Bank, Nucleus Software, High Tech Pipes and Sequence Scientific. Stocks that have negative news flow around them are uh, Zomato, Vajaj Auto, HCL Tech, Zagal Prepaid, Prudent Corporate Advisory and Poly Medicure. All right, so that's the stock list for the day to watch out for. With that, let's quickly